The following is an exclusive presentation of Cablevision Local Programming, TV that's close to home. Welcome to Cable Visions Meet the Leaders. I'm Pat Halpin, sitting down with Nassau County Controller George Maragos. Controller Maragos, it's good to have you back on Meet the Leaders. Pat, thank you for having me. We're taping this show here the uh, almost the second week of December. Uh, and so let's let's kind of do a year-end wrap-up and, and talk about uh, prospects uh, for Nassau County government in, in uh, 2012. How's the county doing? I, I think we're, we stabilized the county finances. Mm -hmm. What's important for the residents to know is that we have not raised property taxes for three consecutive years now. The 2012 budget that was recently adopted and actually yesterday approved by the uh, NIFA, the Oversight Authority, contains no property tax increase going into 2012. So, so that is good news for so our So how residents. was the county able to do that? Because obviously costs have gone up, uh, especially in areas like health and social services and public safety and, and, and the rest of county operations. That's right. They have skyrocketed, not gone up. I think we've seen mm -hmm. uh, health insurance uh, costs go up double digit. Uh, pension contributions went up 20 percent uh, this year. They're going up 42 percent, if you can believe, next year in 2012. That How we is that possible? 42 percent. So is that 42 percent on top of the 20 percent for, the, the for, the, for the current fiscal that's year? Cor so correct. that's a 62 percent increase right. on top of a compounded. On top of a 16 percent in 2010. So that's close to an 80 percent increase in the last three years. But isn't that that's unsustainable? It is unsustainable. I think if it continues, and it's likely to continue, I think it's going to bankrupt almost every county uh, in, in, in the state. It's and of just course, unsustainable. We and of course, another. every town, village, and school district is affected uh, by that expense. Okay, what about some of the other cost drivers? We're in a, we're in a tough recession. Um, it puts a lot of strain on social services. There are a lot of people who have been out of work. Um, on, you know, welfare rolls have got to be increasing as a result of the economy. Uh, they have, actually. Both our welfare uh, rolls are, uh, as well as our Medicaid uh, case, uh, cases have gone up 20%. Uh, now, Medicaid is health care uh, that's provided uh, through the county and the state and the federal government uh, for, for folks who otherwise couldn't afford health care. Th that's, that's correct. So we went up this year from about 80,000 cases mm -hmm. to over 100,000 cases. And as you know, the, the county has to pay 25% uh, uh, of that expenditure. Right. So how has the county been able to manage the budget? I mean, unlike the federal government, you can't print money, you've got to balance the budget. Um, you don't, you, most of your revenues you know, comes from two sources, except for federal and state aid. Uh, the property tax, which has been flat, mm -hmm. and sales tax growth has probably been nominal given the the effect that the recession has had on consumer spending. Right. It has not been easy. Uh, unfortunately, we had to lay off some people. Uh, we've uh, wrested a lot of uh, costs out of uh, uh, government operations, mm -hmm. such as the telephone lines that you, you've heard about. Well, I read a big those. story <laughs> that, you know, you look, you're doing your job. You're out there taking a hard look at county operations as the county controller and said, hey, we're spending a lot of money for phone lines that, that we're not using. That's right. We have not overlooked any uh, wasteful expenditures throughout the, uh, throughout the county government. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, gotten rid of, rid of a lot of unnecessary contracts. Uh, we went out and rebid a lot of uh, new contracts mm -hmm. for services uh, that we need. So as a result, over the last two years, we've been able to reduce over two, $258 million in, in county uh, government expense. So, but still, that's not enough. To, it's to, not to enough. close this budget. The uh, right. NIFA, the Nassau Interim Finance Agency, that state agency that oversees the county's finances, approved the budget, but it wasn't unanimous. Uh, those who voted against it said they had con some, some concerns uh, about the uh, sale of the revenue from long-term leases at, um, at Mitchell Field, so those big office buildings that are on county land, mm -hmm. uh, saying that the real cost of that is about nine and a half percent. You know, they'll, they'll buy up the future revenue, but, right. but at a discounted rate. Okay. Uh, the, from a, a budgetary point of view, mm -hmm. I think we've made significant progress in, in reducing the amount of one-shots and the amount of borrowing that goes into balancing the budget. 
uh, by over 50 percent in the last two years. So the structural uh, deficit uh, mm -hmm. in 2009 was over $300 million. Now it's down to about $150 million. So we've made a lot of progress in l using less one shots and less borrowing. So when you say it's down to $150 million, mm -hmm. uh, that means that $150 million has been made up by some of these one-shot revenues, like the sale of leases. That's right, and some borrowing to pay for uh, termination of okay. employee right, judgments right. and maybe some of the tax cert refunds that we've yes. had to pay out for. So there's been a, a significant progress. With regards to the Mitchell Field mm -hmm. lease paying 9.5%, the county went out with an RFP, so right. we all, it was an open process, and that was the best deal that we could have had. Well, I'm not suggesting that you didn't get a good deal, and mm -hmm. others probably would have wanted more uh, mm -hmm. for the value of those leases. Right. Uh, but some people will say, you're really getting all that cash now, and, and what are you going to do later uh, when you don't have that cash, if, if you don't have other sources of revenue to right. make that up? But unfortunately, that's, those are some of the... Uh, you know, the um, things that we have to do in order to balance the budget to pay for our Medicaid uh, mandates that we have right. to pay to pay for some of the e essential services that the county has to provide while we, uh, we are in this recession where our revenues, as you've indicated, mm -hmm. are not growing. Talk about sales tax revenue. People, you know, this is the Christmas season, everybody's out shopping for the holidays, and uh, they say, hey, folks are, folks, folks are spending a, a lot of money. Uh, and hopefully that'll be good for the county and, and uh, the others that rely on sales tax revenue like the state. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's more to uh, the revenues that go into that sales tax revenue number uh, than just consumer spending. Uh, so far, uh, sales tax revenues have, have come in <coughs> about 3% higher than last year, so mm -hmm. that's positive. Uh, but we still haven't gotten back to, if you can believe it, to the two or to 2008 level. Uh, where the economy was booming, uh, we had close to 1.1 billion in, in, in sales tax revenues. So we're inching back to that level, <coughs> while in the last three years our, our expenses, as we've indicated, have been going up double digit every now year. Now remember in 2008 there was a big real estate boom that, that was coming to an end. Right. Uh, so that was the last of that. You know, I, when I was county executive I used to get these analysis of, from um, economist and the controller and others mm -hmm. and say, well, everybody's at the mall, they're doing great. Because right. no, no, that's good, uh, but people aren't buying as many cars, people are not re uh, you know, buying real estate, you know, houses, uh, turn you know, when people do that, they buy those durable goods that's right. uh, that add mm -hmm. up uh, uh, to a lot of revenue and sales tax. Exactly. So that's coming back, but it, uh, what do we say, it's mm -hmm. not as robust as we would have thought, and we're still not back to the 2008 level while our expenses have, have gone through the roof. So as, as, you're, as you're projecting what the county's needs are going to be mm -hmm. um, for 2012, um, the county executive the, uh, proposed and the legislature approved a budget that says we have to further reduce our workforce correct. unless we get significant givebacks uh, from the public employee unions. That's correct. We're looking, I think the 2012 budget calls for $150 million in, in labor concessions. It's critical that we get those, otherwise our, we will not end in, in, the, in balance. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and unfortunately, if the unions do not come to the table, and I know the county executive is, is working very hard to bring it to the table, uh, there will have to be some additional layoffs. They're talking about layoffs in the neighborhood of another 500 people? It, could it, it be could that be that as much? high as 700 people, yes. 700 people, so that's, that, that's significant. In your opinion, how soon do they have to get those labor savings uh, for it to, uh, to have an impact on, on next year's budget? No later than mid-February. Mid-February, and, and if they don't do that by mid-February, they've got to start doing those that's layoffs. That's correct. And, and some of them may actually start as early as uh, this month, unfortunately. Okay. All right. So when we come back, we're going to talk more with Nassau County Controller George Maragos. He's giving you the straight scoop, so stay with us. While I was on a combat patrol in Bakaba, Iraq, a rocket propel grenade took my arm off at the shoulder. I was discharged from the Army, and I've been working with the Wounded Warrior Project since 2007. Warriors you don't have to be severely wounded to be with the Wounded Warrior Project. We do have a lot of guys that have post-traumatic stress disorder. Being able to share your story, I guess it kind of helps you wrap your mind around what did happen over there. My name is Norby, and yes, I do suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, but I'm okay.
Debt Counseling Corporation is a nonprofit organization which helps consumers like you learn how to pay down their debt. Call us at 888-354-6332 to speak with one of our certified credit counselors free of charge and learn how to take the pain out of paying down your debt. Let us help you on your way to a brighter tomorrow. Gaining weight was easy. All I had to do was sit down and eat. Losing weight's a lot harder. I have to work at it every day. But with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step, every choice, every day. Very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes by losing weight, eating healthy, and staying active. Visit CheckUpAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. Welcome back to Cable Visions Meet the Leaders here with Nassau County Comptroller George Maragos. We've been talking uh, about uh, the uh, current fiscal year, which is coming to an end, and the new one, which will start January 1st. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there are a number of restructurings and reforms uh, that have been approved by the legislature and by the county executive. Well, one of them has to do with uh, no longer using the MTA suburban bus uh, to provide public transportation in Nassau. Uh, Suffolk, I must say, has always had uh, private operators operate the uh, Suffolk County system. Actually, there are a number of them, not just one. Uh, but Nassau uh, put it out for bid and, and came up with a with a new vendor. Tell us about that and, and what are the anticipated benefits? Well, the, um, um, you're right, the county went out for an RFP um, uh, to see if they can um, prevent some of the service uh, cuts and, mm -hmm. and fare increases that the MTA was proposing that were pretty significant, that would uh, um, affect over 16,000 daily riders. That's what the MTA was, uh, was proposing. Uh, the county um, selected Viola who is one of the major global mm -hmm. um, mass transit operators uh, and the contract that they've uh, entered that the legislature approved would have resulted in significantly improved um, uh, service to our commuters, uh, a restoral of a lot of the cuts that the MTA was proposing uh, would have maintained the fare as, uh, uh, constant through, throughout 2012 mm -hmm. and, and uh, partially through 2013. So it was, it was a good deal around lower cost, uh, improved service to our, uh, to our commuters. Now the county has been subsidizing uh, the uh, suburban bus system uh, for some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that subsidy is one that's been reduced uh, over, over time as a result of the county's financial situation. Right, but uh, the situation that the county was faced um, from the, with the MTA was that the MTA was demanding that the county increase its subsidy from nine million approximately mm -hmm. to over 36 million dollars otherwise they would implement severe service cuts uh, and that's what prompted the county executive to go outside and see if we can get another operator uh, to continue the same level of service at a reduced cost and that's what we found that we, if we were to privatize right. the, the system <coughs> uh, not only would we forego the increase but we could reduce the, su the, the county subsidy from nine point from nine million down to 2.5. So that's what happened, and we've been able to, in most uh, re regards, <coughs> to keep the service level the same. Now there's a new wrinkle. Uh, Viola has sold their public transportation uh, entity to a to another company. I believe it's a Paris-based company. Well, they've announced that they will divest themselves divest, right. uh, from the mass transit market. So as as controller, uh, and I know the county executive's looking at this. So is the legislature. You know, I guess the first question you got to be asking yourself. Can we get enough assurances uh, that the that the new vendor, the new entity that will own you know their 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 mass transit uh, business, can do the job? That that's correct, and I know the county executive is is talking to Veolia right now, looking for those assurances, uh, trying to clarify what their long term strategy is going to be. How soon will they be divesting mm -hmm. themselves? Um, what are the likely divestiture uh, options that they have, and whether their, their North American operation will continue as a viable uh, long-term uh, operation. So uh, before that transfer is made, they're gonna get answers to those questions. Absolutely. So let's assume, let's, let's play this out. Let's assume, mm -hmm. we know that if, if, they, if they get the assurances, uh, the project will go through. Um, if they don't, do they have a fallback position? 
Well, the fallback is to continue with the MTA, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, continuing with the MTA will either require substantially increased subsidy on the part of the county, which mm -hmm. money we don't have, or mm -hmm. even more drastic uh, service cuts. And they could also go to the second bidder and say, "We need you to step in," and maybe, and that, you know, they may not be able to do that January first. Or would correct. they have to rebid the whole thing? As controller, you have some say on that. Well, uh, I have a say when the contract actually re re reaches my desk. Okay, uh, that's until true. Until then, I provide uh, advice. Advice. <laughs> so they could go to the sometimes second. Sometimes it's taken, sometimes it's not. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're, you're going to reserve judgment Absolutely. Uh, until you have an opportunity to look at. It. That's fair. Mm -hmm. You know, we we've been talking about finances, you know, and I have to say whether it's Nassau County or Suffolk County or the City of New York or the State of New York or the federal government, these are hard conversations. Uh, that public officials are having with each other, with the public, with public employee unions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and with uh, you know, all of their constituents. Um, so if you step back, I mean, if, if, if you were to assess kind of where Nassau County is right now, would you say you know, they're, they're in an okay place, all things considered? I, I think so. I think we've, we've weathered the recession better than, than most uh, uh, local governments. Right. Uh, I think we, as I've indicated, uh, we've protected our residents against a property tax increase from, for three consecutive years now. That's a remarkable uh, achievement. Uh, Nassau County has one of the lowest unemployment rates in, in the country at less than 6.5%. Uh, so our people are employed, they're spending money, our sales tax revenues are up, not as much as we would have liked, but they're spending money, uh, mm -hmm. they're up, and, and hopefully we will come out of this recession uh, and this is con will continue to be a wonderful place to, to live and l raise a family. Well, if we don't come out of this recession, we all have a lot of issues to deal with. So That's you'll have correct. plenty of company. Okay, we'll keep it right here. Meet the leaders. We'll be right back. Yeah, we'll you can watch Meet the Leaders anytime you want. Go to Channel 502. Select News and World, then Local On Demand, choose Long Island, and enjoy the show. Join us this fall at Step Out, Walk to Stop Diabetes. Bring your friends, family, and coworkers to walk with thousands of people from across the country and help us change the future of diabetes. The money you raise will make a difference. Together, we can stop diabetes one step at a time. Register today at 1-888-DIABETES or visit diabetes.org slash step out. Do you have diabetes? Join the movement to stop diabetes as a red strider at the American Diabetes Association's Step Out Walk to Fight Diabetes. Join hundreds of walkers who share your passion and showcase the courage it takes to live and thrive with diabetes. Gather your friends, family, and coworkers to walk with you and raise funds to help change the future of diabetes. Sign up today at diabetes.org slash Together, we can stop diabetes one step at a time. Welcome back to Meet the Leaders here with Nassau County Controller George Maragos. You know, Controller Maragos, we've been talking about the effect of the national recession, what it's had on New York, what it's had on Nassau County, um, and of course, what it's had on the country, you know, we know. Um, but if you step back, um, I mean, there, you're, you're going to do your job to make sure every tax dollar is spent as wisely and as carefully as possible. You're going to offer uh, solutions or suggestions on how they could save more money. You've got to make sure we're not wasting money on phone right. lines. But, but, but this is, we've got to figure out a way to get this national economy going again. Um, and I know that you've given a lot of thought to that. So here you are in the trenches, uh, but we're kind of being buffeted by the tides here in the winds. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, 
How do we got to get these tides and these winds going in a different direction in this nation? We need bold initiatives, both at the state level and at the national level, to move uh -huh. our economy. First, we have to make our economy competitive uh, by reducing regulation. You know, the, sm the Small Business Administration mm -hmm. released a study last year uh, that calculated the the uh, the amount of uh, mm -hmm. the, the 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 regulatory cost. Um, on, on our economy, and they determined that it, it adds $10,000 per year per employee. That's wow. a remarkable you know, uh, cost uh, that our small businesses are, are burdened with. So f we have to make our, com our, our economy competitive. We have to bring manufacturing back to, to America. How do we do that? I mean, we do have uh, high manufacturing costs. I mean, we don't have a situation like they have in China, mm -hmm. uh, where frankly a lot of people say they manipulate their currency against uh, the American dollar and the euro, uh, so that uh, you know their cost of doing business is, is significantly less mm -hmm. than it would be if their currency were were properly valued. How do we do that? This can't be a race to the bottom, especially not in a state no, like New York. No, it's not, and I, and I, I think the, the, the currency manipulation is a, is a false argument. I think it's not going to have a significant you know, impact. Mm -hmm. I think the real issue is that we, we do not have fair trade, and, and China is basically stealing our, uh, our, our factories, because if you want to do business in China, if you want to export into China, you have to have a manufacturing plant there. Otherwise, you know, it becomes difficult for you to export. Well, we have an open market here, and they, they can import, export into our market very mm. uh, freely. So it's really not fair trade, and that's why we have the trade balance, imbalance the, uh, that, that we have. So what are some of the reforms you would make to these trade agreements to ensure that we're at a level playing field? Well, I think you know, if, if China doesn't take down these barriers uh, that are uh, result in our fair trade, mm -hmm. I think we should impose the same kind of requirements mm -hmm. on them exporting to, to, our, uh, to our market. So in other words, if they're not prepared to make investments in the United States to set up factories here, why should we allow them to be flooding and that's flooding our, our country with, uh, with cheap imports? And that's exactly the requirement that they have on us. You want to export to China, you've got to bring your factory here. And that's what motivated General Electric, for example, in their, uh, mm -hmm. their medical um, um, uh, business to basically uh, outsource, uh, locate in, in China. Um, so that, that is the result of their unfair trade uh, practices that we have to overcome. What about energy independence? When you go to mm -hmm. Europe, um, you know, obviously they're as, if not more, dependent on, on uh, oil from the Middle East mm -hmm. uh, than we are. Uh, there are a number of things that, that they've done. Uh, you can't find a gasoline car in Europe. They're all diesel. Right. Uh, you, and, and if they're not diesel, they're, they're fueled by natural gas, mm -hmm. which we have plenty of. Diesel gives you, you know, much more miles per gallon. But there's a lot more that we can be doing that they're doing there, like wind and solar. Why haven't we really done that? And, and, and can we do that without massive government investment? Well, ab absolutely we can. I think we, we, we need a policy to become energy independent <coughs> in 10 years. And let the private uh, sector get, get us there uh, with appropriate you know, incentives. Uh, but we have a situation, even here in, in New York State, where we have a tremendous natural gas deposits mm -hmm. out west that we, that we cannot tap into because of various regulations, while Pennsylvania is thriving and booming because you know, they have a more liberal in environment uh, and, and they're tapping into those reserves. You're talking about the Marcella Shell. The Shell. Marcella Shell, exactly. The Marcella Shell. Now, environmentalists are concerned about uh, the impact of so-called hydrofracking, they call it fracking, right. uh, what it might mean to uh, wells and drinking water as well as the greater environment from and the And we slurry. should be concerned, but yeah. that's, there's many ways to do it mm -hmm. uh, safely and only make sure that uh, companies with a safe environmental record are allowed to drill. Uh, we have power plants, hydroelectric power plants, that are shutting down up in, in, in Buffalo because they, we don't have adequate transmission capacity right. to bring that power downstate. Uh, that is the type of coordination that has to be part of an overall uh, bold energy independent strategy. So if, uh, if, if you were in Washington, you would say, look, if we're going to spend money as a nation, and, and you're not suggesting that we shouldn't be investing in infrastructure. Right. Things like a, uh, you know, a modern electric transmission grid would be at the top of your list. Absolutely. And, and tapping into 
all the natural uh, energy resources that we have right here at home. So is T. Boone Pickens right when he says, look, use this natural gas. We got enough of it for 100 years. It'll, it'll provide the transition so that we can literally you know, wean ourselves quickly off, uh, off oil from the Middle East. Oh, absolutely. I, I think it's important.